Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of A Fright Friday right here on Night Owl Video. Today I'm talking about this movie, Taurus Trap, from 1979. Um, the glare on the case is really bad, sorry about that. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about Taurus Trap. Uh, we'll talk about uh, cast, production, critical response, all that jazz. My thoughts on the film, so I hope you stick around. Thank you to everybody who subscribed recently. I'm now up to 379 subscribers, so thank you to everybody who has decided to join along. Uh, on this movie journey. I appreciate your support. And uh, yeah, we're talking about Taurus Trap. This movie is a horror movie from 1979, originally released in the UK as Nightmare of Terror, which I don't think is a very good title. This was directed by somebody named uh, David Schmoller, who also did Crawl Space from 1986, as well as the cult classic Pul uh, Puppet Master. Sorry, I almost said Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Puppet Master. Um, I've never, I have not seen Crawl Space from 1986. I have seen Puppet Master. I'm not a mega fan of the Puppet Master movies, but I know it definitely has its fans for sure. Taurus Trap stars Jocelyn Jones, uh, who was also in uh, the Dirty Harry film, The Enforcer. This also shows John Van Ness, who was in Alligator 2, The Mutation, as well as some TV work. This also stars Robin Sherwood, who was in the... Uh, John Geralta film Blowout, which is actually a pretty cool movie, as well as uh, Death Wish 2 with Charles Bronson. Uh, this also shows the lovely Tanya Roberts, who was in Beastmaster, probably uh, as Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, and probably best known as Midge from that 70s show. She passed away in 2021 from sepsis, which was uh, really sad because Tanya Roberts is so cool and... Um, you know, I remember, like, seeing her in, like, Starlog and stuff back in the 80s and just thinking she was super cool, super beautiful, super talented actor. And so, and of course, Midge on that 70s show, she was hilarious in that role. So, uh, R.I.P. to Tanya Roberts. And mostly, most important, this stars Chuck Connors in the uh, lead role. Um, he was also in Soylent, Soylent Green as well as uh, Summer Camp Nightmare. Uh, I've seen Soylent Green, which I think might have gotten overhyped to me because I didn't really like it that much. Uh, Summer Camp Nightmare I have not seen, but I've heard it's pretty legendary at this point. The synopsis for Tourist Trap is a group of stranded teenagers falls prey to the demented owner of a roadside museum and his army of evil mannequins. Um, yeah. This movie's really cool. This is very different for the genre. If you're talking about horror movies, um, the screenplay for Tourist Trap was written by David Schmoller and J. Larry Carroll, the latter of whom pitched the film to producer Charles Band, uh, which is hence why this is on uh, Full Moon. Uh, initially, Schmoller intended for John Carpenter to direct, to direct this film, but Carroll was unsatisfied with the financial arrangement and opted instead that Schmoller should direct. So I think John Carpenter wanted more money than they could offer him, which is unfortunate because I think um, that could have been an interesting uh, film. The original uh, screenplay did not feature... Uh, so in the film, um, there is the character, the main character, the baddie, uh, has like these telekinetic powers and he can make things uh, move and scare people. Uh, the original screenplay did not feature those telekinetic powers. According to Carol, the idea was proposed by Charles Band, who insisted it be implemented into the script. I think it was a cool ad, actually, because it added kind of a supernatural twist to it, which was different for movies at that time, especially horror movies. Schmoller drew in, uh, inspiration from the surrealist films of Al Alejandro Jodorowsky and Louis Bunuel, as well as his observations of store mannequins in a J.C. Penney department store. So he, uh, I guess Schmoller took some inspiration from very uh, disparate uh, sources. But, uh, you know, Jodorowsky, Bunuel, uh, I don't think this movie quite hits those marks, but um, you could definitely see where it inspired the film. And definitely gave it like a unique spin compared to a lot of stuff that was coming out at that time. Uh, Schmoller said that $50,000 of the film's budget was dedicated to salary for the lead actor playing the, the villain, Mr. Schlossen. The role was uh, 
originally offered to several other Hollywood actors, including Jack Palance, who turned it down. Uh, Chuck Connors, who was the production crew's third choice for the role, accepted the uh, role. Uh, allow, allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little moment there, but... Um, yeah, I think it would have been very interesting if it was John Carpenter directing and Jack Palance in the lead role. Uh, I couldn't imagine what that would have looked like, but I think Schmoller and um, Connors did a pretty cool job. I'm not complaining. Uh, I just like sometimes, you know, as a film geek, you kind of like to imagine what what that what some films might look like with uh, these proposed cast and production people. Uh, Tourist Trap was filmed in 24 days in Los Angeles County, California, with additional interior shots at the Rampart Sound Studios in Los Angeles. Principal photography began on March 27th, 1978. I was uh, eight years old when this movie was being made. Uh, some of you probably weren't even born. Production designer Robert A. Burns, who had worked on Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Wes Craven's The Hills Have Eyes, handled the art direction and a majority of the special effects on Tour's Trap, including the mannequins and their physical manipulations. And he did a very good job. Italian composer Pino Donaggio was in town working on Joe Dante's Piranha at the time that David Schmoller was filming Tourist Trap. Since Donaggio spoke Spanish, as did Schmoller, the director was able to convince the composer to score the music for Tourist Trap. The two would um, have subsequent collaborations, including uh, the aforementioned Crawl Space from 1986. Despite its uh, depictions of violence and uh, macabre images, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, awarded the film surprisingly a PG rating. Because of its rating, the film was able to receive significant broadcast on syndicated television in the years following its theatrical release. So I thought that was quite interesting because, yeah, this movie might not have a lot of, like, over-the-top gore and stuff, but it's the tone and the mood of the thing that just gives you the willies i mean this is a spooky movie um surprisingly this film only holds a 40 percent on rotten tomatoes if you follow that kind of thing from retrospective reviews author and film critic leonard malton gave the film one and a half out of four stars stating that although the film had a couple of genuine scares it was a quote mostly boring thriller unquote Author Stephen King, in his book Dance Macabre from 1981, praised the film as an obscure classic, noting that the film, quote, wields an eerie spooky power as wax figures begin to move and come to life in a ruined, out-of-the-way tourist resort, unquote. So uh, Mr. Stephen King was a fan of this film. And I think there's actually a quote on the case. Yeah, actually the part, partial... Uh, uh, quote of the quote that I just read so my thoughts on this film now I've seen this movie twice now in my life um, I, I streamed it a couple of years ago during the pandemic and I thought it was really good I mean when it was done I was like that was really spooky really different um, I have to be honest on second viewing I, I wasn't really I wasn't super into it. I still think it's a cool movie, but I think it was one of those ones that, again, it was like hyped up to me. So I've heard so much about it. When I finally got around to watching it, I thought, yeah, this is actually like a really interesting, spooky, cool movie. Uh, but now on my second watch, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't in the mood for it that day, but I think it's a very well done movie. I think it's a very original movie. The, uh, you know, Chuck Connors is great. He's very menacing, uh, even though he tries to come off as sort of, uh, you know, uh, polite and, and gentle with these teenagers. Uh, he's got this kind of glean in his eye where you're just not too sure. When the masks come out and when the mannequins come out and when the telekinetic business starts, uh, this movie is, is quite surreal. It's quite weird. And you would not want to be trapped in one of those rooms in this roadside uh, museum with uh, Chuck Connors walking around with weird masks on and stuff. Um, yeah, and there there is a twist at the end, which I won't give away because maybe some people haven't seen it, but um, it's, yeah. The acting is quite good. I would say the teenager, teenagers are probably in their 20s, but or 30s, but um, 
Uh, like I said, Chuck Connors is really good. The music is very spooky. It definitely adds like some serious weird vibes to this movie. The whole setting of just that isolated uh, roadside muse museum kind of thing with mannequins and it it is... It is pretty unsettling, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I will say on second viewing, that part still really held up for me. Um, you definitely feel kind of uneasy. And again, Chuck Connors is so... He seems so like nice to the teenagers and stuff. And then, But then, you know, he's got this other side to him that you will see if you watch this movie. This is the Full Moon Features uh, DVD. Um, I cannot see a year on it because the print is too small. Actually, all the print is too small on this for me to even uh, really say much about the DVD. Um, it doesn't even have a rating on it. That's weird. I don't remember this being overly long, though. I think it's a good length. Um, the special features on this DVD are an audio commentary with David Schmoller, rare trailers, and an interview with David Schmoller. So I do really like the cover art. I wish I could, maybe if I take it out of the case... You can see it without so much glare, but I do really like the cover art for this DVD. This is the uncut version. There's the back. There's some of the shots. There's some of the masks there. You can see how, or the mannequins, how creepy that looks. Uh, this movie is generally quite, quite creepy. So if you're looking for something like an eight or you're looking for a late seventies, early eighties, uh, slasher sort of surreal slasher horror flick uh, you'll probably dig tourist trap um, i watched a couple of other reviewers talk about this movie and a lot of reviewers say the same like it was very different from what was coming out at the time it wasn't just like a straight slasher so if you're looking for something a little different or a different take on things uh, this movie offers that uh spooky um like I said, the telekinesis was really cool and different compared to other slashers and horror movies of the time. You can currently watch this for free on Roku and Tubi apps in Canada, and you can also rent it on YouTube. Uh, I have been thrifting for four years actively, and I've never seen this out in the wild. I did find this new at a record store, but uh, I don't know how common it is to come across. Another one that would be cool to find on vhs but um that's my thoughts on tourist trap did you like tourist trap leave your comments below did you like it did you not like it do you think it's overrated uh do you think it's underappreciated let me know your thoughts i uh, consider giving me the thumbs up if you like this review consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already um like i said i'm closing in on 400 so 400 subscribers that is so i should try to do some uh, special um content for my 400 uh, subscriber count. Um, I have been thinking a lot about my top 25 or my top 30 movies of all time. Uh, so that's something I'm also thinking about. And coming soon, I will have my, um, I haven't thought of a cool title for it yet, but I am going to start covering some more like mainstream movies and Hollywood, um, I like blockbusters and things like that, which don't really fit into cult movie or horror movie uh, categories. So I'm hopefully going to start a new series that will uh, start to include some of those films because I do enjoy those uh, films as well. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I will see you at the video store or at the thrift store or just out in a boat somewhere. But hopefully we will not get stranded at a roadside motel with mannequins and Chuck Connors. Until next time, take good care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.